Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at a volume of revolution using the washer method. So what we have here is we have three equations, y equals x squared, x equals 2, and y equals 0. And that's going to, to be the, the, those are going to be the boundaries of, of this particular area right here, this pink area. In the last video we rotated this area about the x-axis. So let's remind ourselves of what that looked like. Here, here's that that area revolved about the x-axis. What I can do is I can build some disks and this is kind of the idea of volume of revolution anyway. Um, this happens to just be six disks and you know the more disks you have the, the, the closer that approximation will be. Well if we let the number of disks go to infinity it's going to it's going to actually be the volume. So if I animate it um, you can see that we have this disk. It's actually it's actually a cylinder at this point. I mean, you can see it. It's a solid cylinder, sort of building um, this cone. And we're going to let the integral collect all those different um, little little disks. I call them disks. Um, okay. So what what's this new one going to look like? What is it going to look like if we rotate it not about the x-axis, but rather about this line y equals negative three? Okay, just the pink area. We're not doing anything other than the pink area. So let's get a visual of what that would look like. If I, if I, uh, hang on, give me a minute here. If I change the axis of rotation to negative 3, uh, you'll see that what happens is we actually get this sort of different looking object, and it looks like it has a hole in it instead. Okay, it's no longer pointy down here. It's just we can look down at this way if we wanted to. Um, but it's basically like a cone with the tip chopped off and there's a hole that's drilled through it. So now they're no longer disks that are that are building this thing but rather they're, they're washers. So here's these washers and you can see again you can still look straight down this thing. Okay and if I animate if I animate one of those washers this gives you hopefully a visual of how that solid is being constructed. And you can imagine that if if the width of this washer here, the width of it, was small enough, um, I could even make it smaller if you want. I can, uh, instead of 6, let's do, uh, let's do 10. Let's see if that'll just be a little bit smaller. Animate it. Okay, there you go. So you can see that that thing is, I don't know that that looks much different. I suppose it's a little, it's a little skinnier. Um, but anyway, the idea is to figure out what is the area of one of those washers and, and then let the integral collect them for us and that will be our volume. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to do this now. Um, let's get rid of the area and let's go ahead and reflect that parabola down below. Now you can see I also reflected part of the x-axis right here. This part of the x-axis is actually going to be um, is going to help us form that hole. This is the hole right here. Okay now the next thing I do is I like to to build sort of what I call the outer disk or the outer the outer part of this solid. And then the inner part of that will be this little hole right here. So I don't know if that makes sense from your perspective, but but you can start to see this shape take form. Okay, the next thing I do is I like to to create some random disk inside inside of my solid. This is just some. This is like that that washer that that's sweeping this purple washer right here. I'm building one of those in my drawing because I'm going to going to be interested in its area. Okay, well, we also need the the hole in that that disk. So let's let's go ahead and and put that up there. There it is. Okay, so now the idea this yellow disk right here, this yellow disk, is is what we're inter actually yellow washer is what we're interested in. I'll just draw it out here. That would be the outside part. This would be the inside part, and we're interested in in all this area right here. And the technique is just the area of the outer circle minus the area of the inner circle that's going to be the area of this washer okay so 
what is that area? What is the area of of this this outside disk here? So for that we would need a radius. And that radius is going to be right here. Okay, that radius is right here. What is that radius? Well, you just have to look at the the upper value of it. What's this value right here? And it's on this parabola. Okay, so this parabola is x squared. So the top of this pink line is x squared units high. Well, what's the bottom of this thing going to equal? The bottom of this thing is going to equal just negative 3. So we could say that the big radius, um, the big radius, we'll just put big R, big R stands for big radius, is going to be x squared minus negative 3. And again, if you don't if you don't see why we did that, just pretend that this x squared was 10. Let's say that this was 10 units high. Well, how long would this line segment right here be if this was 10 and this is negative 3? 10 minus negative 3 is 13. And I think everybody can see that this is really 13 units long. OK, so we have the big radius now. Um, you can see that this simplifies to x squared plus 3. And now we can find the area of that thing. The area. The area is going to be pi times that radius squared. And I'm just going to plug this radius um, directly in. Here comes the radius. OK, so that's the area. That would be the area of, of this, this disk right here. We just found that, all that area right there. OK, now let's go and find the area of this, this little or inner disk in here. Um, try to pick a color that you can actually see here. Um, well, I don't know. Let's try. Actually, white might work. Okay, so here's the top of that inside, that inside disk right here, and we're interested in that radius right there. That's a little blurry. I know. I apologize, but just look at the mouse movement if you can't see the color. So, what is this radius? Well, how high is it? This is at zero. And this is at negative three. Okay, um, so what's zero minus negative three? Well, it's just three. So let's go ahead and and uh, do little. Let me give me give me some more room here. Let me scroll up. We'll say little little r. That's the little radius, and that's just going to equal three. Okay. Well, what's the area of this little tiny hole? Uh, going to be? Well, it's going to be pi times that radius squared. And that radius in this case is just 3. Okay, so what this area is then is effectively this area. Whoops, I uh, just realized I'm off screen. It's effectively this area right here. We just found that little pink area. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and find the area of the washer then. The area of the washer is going to be this area minus this area right here. Okay, so we'll write that out. Pi times x squared plus 3 quantity squared minus, minus this area, which is pi. Uh, well, I guess we could just say 9 pi. OK, now what we're going to do is we're going to let the integral collect all of these things. This is really an area. And if I turn it into an integral, tack on this little dx, this little dx is like an infinitely small width of this, this washer. So I have an area times a width or a height or however you want to think of it. And an area times a height is a volume. And we're going to be collecting these disks, disks over the interval from 0 to 2. Okay, 0 is right here, and we're going all the way to 2 right here. Okay, well, the rest is just some mechanics. So let's go ahead and evaluate now this integral. And I'm going to do this uh, fairly quickly. I'm going to assume that, that you're proficient in, in evaluating definite integrals. So let's try to simplify this as much as possible. Um, I can 
I can pull a pi out. I can factor a pi out of this 9 pi in, in, in the pi out of here, and I can pull it outside. And we're evaluating it from 0 to 2. And at the same time, I'm going to expand this, and it should be x to the 4th plus 6x squared plus 9 and then minus 9 dx okay well this is this is going to simplify to pi a value uh, um, times the integral from 0 to 2 of x to the fourth plus 6x squared dx okay so let's let's finish this up and we're going to get pi times. Now we have to go calculate the antiderivative of this thing. And it should be 1 fifth x to the fifth uh, plus, plus 2x cubed. And that's all going to get evaluated from 0 to 2. And this will be pi times, now here comes our fundamental theorem of calculus, I'm going to plug a 2 in wherever I see an x, and I get 32 fifths, 32 fifths uh, plus 16 minus 0 uh, plus 0. Okay, and if you add the 32 fifths and the 16, um, I believe you get 112 over 5 pi and that's your volume okay so I hope that helped that 112 fifths pi is the volume is the volume of this solid that we just created in the next video we're going to be looking at a volume of revolution but the area defining that volume is going to be the intersection of two completely separate functions so hopefully we'll see you there